so the next session uh, is um, so the speaker of the next session is uh, Giancarlo Aciotturi. Well, uh, so um, Giancarlo is a student in Universidad Complutense de Madrid, and he will talk about big data and uh, geography. So I'll leave you the the, the, the mic. Uh, thank you very much. Well, uh, my proposal thesis is geographic space and big data an analysis about fundamentals and applications, case study, rice crop mapping, Laguna Marin watershed, Uruguay. Well, the objectives of this work is to, de are to develop a theoretical outline intended to expose some fundamentals of big data applied to geographic space analysis, to identify big data-based method methodologies for analyzing the spatial phenomenon, particularly such alternatives connected to geographic information technologies. To identify some remote sensing big data based free access tools to map environmental variables, to map rice crop areas for Laguna Marine watershed in Uruguay by using Sentinel-1 imagery. Well, we have this structure for the presentation. The theoretical background, general methods, a study area description, rice crop mapping. Well, I am a geographer, so I'm going to talk a very, very little about my science. Geography views the world from the geographic space as a point of view. Many ideas from, the, from different disciplines are synthesized. So right here, we have uh, uh, some synthesis that comes from physical subfields, human physical interaction and human subfields. For physical subfields, we can talk about climatology, hydrology, geology, geomorphology, biology, soil science. For human subfields, we can give an example from sociology, demography. Well, that, that elements can have a very strong interaction that results in for example, environmental dimension, urban interaction, agricultural dynamics, and so many. What happens with that? So we can have quantitative or qualitative analysis, and we can examine we can examine that elements in, by an individual way or by an integrated analysis. Well, so we have geographic information technologies as an alternative. Geographic information technologies could have GIS, remote sensing, cartography, geodesy, GPS. By the other hand, we have a, a, new, a new method. Big data is a new informatics philosophy based on high volume data processing and opportunities to improve decision making and in science and everydayness. So big data have a philosophy that works under five Bs. Volume, that refers a, about a huge amount of data. Vari uh, variety, that talks about formats of data. Value means that, that we will have information that will be useful from solve many problems. Velocity talks about high speed of accumulation of data and veracity uh, talks about the real reliability of information, okay? So big data source, we, we can have many big data source, web and social media, people generated, machines, institutions, and biometric operations. Well, so uh, big data processing is quite complex and they have uh, many elements. So right now we are going to talk about two very important, the cloud computing and sophisticated computer science. Well, this uh, theoretical background will make me a question that says, can we make big data analysis for environmental or geographical analysis? Of course, this is my hypothesis. So that's tools which support an spatial, temporal, complex analysis. Well, so with this background, we are going to construct like a theoretical document that could be helpful for people interested in applying big data 
for environmental or um, geographic analysis. This is one of the, this is the basic first step. Well, so for example, big data has been arising in the scientific and everyday in everyday world. For example, by searching in Scopus, we have we have found that since the, since that in the last ten years, the scientific publications has increased very strongly. For example, in 2011. There is the publications just rise about a little more than 3,000, but last year uh, they reached about 25,000. So big data is getting a uh, very important in science. Well, so what 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 about if we talk about sustainable development goal uh, goals? Well. We are going to we are we're going to find a way to relate that C, CDG with the geography. Well, and and with the well, with those links, I have another question for myself: How can the mapping be relevant in helping society reach these targets? Well, mapping the indicator mapping the indicators seems like a good first step. We all know that well-crafted maps can effectively exhibit known facts in a visual way. This was said by Minu Jan Crack. So we think in general, geography and geographic information technologies will support indirectly or directly the, underst the understanding of geographical distribution of CDGs and related variables. Well, well so we have a uh, general methods. It will be, we will start by a bio by a bibliographic research, probably in Scopus, Google Scholar, and are recommend I are very very recommended tools for scientific uh, studies. Of course, we will have in the future field surveying to know or to understand better the biophysical and socioeconomical dynamics of and case for our case study. And as a big data tool, we are going to use Google Earth Engine by making supervised classification of Sentinel-1 imagery. Well, so let's talk about our study area. Our study area is Laguna Merin, but Laguna Merin is an international watershed, yes? So it has a it has two it has the part in two countries the southern Brazil and northeast Uruguay. So in this case, we are interested in the Uruguayan side. Well, so let's that let's describe a little bit factors of Laguna Marine watershed. Laguna Marine uh, has high biodiversity. We have their Ramsar areas. Laguna Marine also is important for the economy in Uruguay. So they uh, there have forest production for wood, rice crop production. They have seasonal tourism see, for uh, specifically for South Hemisphere summer. Well, and also we are going to identify uh, for, for example, if we are going to identify important but important variables or characteristics, we are going to use remote sensing. But what happens? This area is frequently cloud covered, so that will be challenging. Well, uh, um, a little time ago, we say we said that we are going to map rice crop areas. So let's talk why. Let let's talk a little bit about why rice is so important. FAO says that it's a major food staple and mainstay for the rural population and for household food security. It's of special importance of the nutrition of large riches of the population in Asia, parts of Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, increasingly so in Africa. FAO says that 
uh, that rice is one of the most popular food in the world. And okay, we can uh, if we see that graphic, we can see that Asia is the most powerful continent in rice production, as an average from the about about uh, thirty years. So that we can uh, here we can say the main countries producers. So right here we can see that the only non-Asian is Brazil. But what happens with Uruguay? Okay, Uruguay is not a big producer, but the rice for the country is very important. Why? Because Uruguay is one of the, I think is the, the fifth or the sixth exporter. So many of that production goes to another country. Well, what happened? Okay, we, we talk about rice crop mapping, yeah? But rice crop mapping is challenging. Why? Well, let's see that picture, okay? We can see a RGB combination of Sentinel-2 imagery. What happens? Let's see this red, that, that red intense area. We represent forests, right? So that will remain, uh, if you see, for example, forests in very, in many imagery, you can see the forests with this look. What happened with rice? Rice will look in different ways. For example, rice, you can, you can, will see the rice as a bare soil. You can, you will see the rice as a vegetation. You will see the rice as the fruit area. And again, you will see the rice like bare soil. What happened? That means that we will need a huge amount of data. So we, in, in this instance, we can talk, we can talk about a big amount of satellite imagery. So we will have big quant big data, yes? But what happens? For that, we, uh, we will use no novel techniques, okay? Uh, another fact for, uh, for the study area. The study area is frequently covered, is frequently cloud covered, so, may probably will not have good imagery in for the optical. So what will we, what will be our target? We will have to process uh, radar imagery. What radar? Because radar is not sensitive is not sensitive to cloud cover. So we can acquire imagery independently for from cloud cover. Okay. But what happens? As we said, we will need a lot of data that could not be processed under standard techniques. So we will have to use big data supported in cloud computing and in, uh, in, and in artificial intelligence, okay? So one of the results will be the rice crop area. And uh, in this moment, we can ask to ourselves, how can this data support the sustainable development goals? Well, for example, for zero, for zero hunger, we can estimate and quantify the amount of rice produced. Well, for, uh, for the sixth goal, clean water and sanitation. In this moment, we, we make the, that question. Why? Because the crop, the, the super to the crop cultivated the data for crop for crop cultivated areas will be useful to water quality estimations okay and uh, the 15 goal that is that is life on land what happens this um, this area the rice crop areas are associated with another biological environments and another way, uh, another ways of life, like for example, some kind of of birds. Well, so this is the presentation. Merci beaucoup. Thanks. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, <laughs>
Uh, is there any question uh, for, for this presentation? Others, I have a question because you know I'm a big fan of big data and the cloud okay. computing. Yeah, very big fan. Um, okay. And yeah, <laughs> and I want to know more about you know the, um, the the last point that you said that you mentioned the algorithm, which is something mm -hmm. one I have no idea what this algorithm is doing, and I'm very interested to know more about this. So I have two questions. First of all, is what is the purpose of this algorithm? Because it said this is a supervised classification. Okay. I, I know. Say I, I know. You know. I know classification, I know supervised learning, but I don't know both of them together. So I'm very interested to know what it is. And secondly, is what tools do you use to uh, run the, this algorithm? Okay, well, thanks for the question. And yes, we talk at, uh, about intel, uh, artificial intelligence. So in remote sensing, actually it's very, very used the random, the random forest classifier, okay? Oh, so okay. the intention of this algorithm is to identify rice crop areas by using some samples of areas that we think is rice. But, you know, we will deploy a large temporal series of imagery. Oh, so basically your left-hand side variable is zero or one, either rice or not, and you try to uh, map the, 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 the pixels to identify yes. which one are rice and which ones are, are not rice. Exactly. Oh. But you know, this will be especially complex because we will have many imagery. So, for example, we have to have some samples from, um, from bare soil of the same geographic location. The next time it will be vegetation. So we will have many samples of the same points, but what happens with the same geographic location, but for different times. Okay, but uh, you mentioned random forest and you mentioned time. So my question is, how do you tackle time, the trend in, in your algorithm? Because you know, um, those kind of boosting algorithm like uh, random trees or XGBoost does not tackle very well the, the time series. You know, how do you take into account the time component? Because you know, in, in random forest, each row is um, independent from another row. So we don't have time component in, uh, you know, in, in, in such algorithm, like trees algorithm doesn't have time component. So how do you tackle this uh, autocorrelation in time uh, in, in your analysis? Because you said that it, it, it's changed over time. Mm -hmm. So how do you tackle this? Uh, how do you tackle this time component? Mm, well, uh, the time component, uh, um, the so we will have a, a, a set of imagery. So for example, uh, November, December, January, February. But the time as as time will not be anal analyzed. So. Uh, the algorithm identifies uh, areas with the, with more or less the same behavior, but the time uh, time will not be um, like a evaluated variable in our in our work. Okay. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I can I can uh, ask you a letter the question like how do you really did your um, did this analysis because it's uh, this is something we want to uh, to discuss with my supervisor you know to use imagery in in, in economics and since I'm also uh, using uh, machine learning algorithm and other AI stuff I want to know how you did it and uh, to, to know more about the methodology but that was a very uh, interesting uh, uh, presentation. Ah, okay. And uh, we learn a lot about it. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope, and I hope to to share this 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 research with everyone. But you know that the, the tool I'm using is um, that I'm going to use is Google Earth Engine. So Google Earth Engine is a platform that can stand uh, very large amounts of imagery. So mm -hmm. it is the tool that will be used. And also, the from I know I'm, start, I'm starting the research and big data. We will is challenging because we um, the users 
we will have to new new techniques. For example, I come from geography, and in the <laughs> as the, the in the years, so we are learning new things. And big data represents uh, probably that you must learn some code, some codification language. And in, uh, in this instance, I'm going to use uh, JavaScript that is support in Google Earth Engine. But you know, maybe we can talk more about it. Of course, we will keep yeah, it well, JavaScript is a, is a very nice language, uh, but you can use either JavaScript or Python that's both uh, are okay to, uh, to tackle big data. And yes. you can go to the cloud yes. to have the power of, uh, uh, to have the power, the resource power. Yeah. Yes, I also I have heard that uh, I, I learned um, the Google Earth Engine by Java, but also I know that, uh, see, yes, that uh, other people use Python. And yes, I, I will open to new Python or everything will improve the, the knowledge. You will find it easier to use Python than JavaScript, I can tell you. <laughs> ah, thank you very much.